uh, just praying for people. There's one guy, he just wept the entire time, and he just said, this, this made my day. Jonathan Rich prayed with him, and God just really did an awesome work yesterday. Thank you, everybody that came out and participated in that. It was so good. Looking forward to our fish fry tonight. Speaking of food, I've been on a million diets in my life. Actually, my life has been a constant stream of diets. No, I'm not looking for you to give me the miracle diet that will soothe it all. And no, I, yes, I know it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change, Richard. I've actually gotten the name in my family, the fluctuator. So the weight goes up, the weight goes down. In drastic measures, they call me the fluctuator. What's the problem, you say? I really like food. Yeah, that's it. I like food. This actually has something to do with the sermon. So just hold on for a second. I set out, and I don't know what it is about Mondays. Monday's a good day to start a diet. Don't you dare start one on Saturday. Don't start right now. It's Sunday. Tomorrow's diet day. Today's feasting day. Anybody else? For you, Monday is the official start of a new diet pretty much every week. Tuesday. Someone said Tuesday. Well, it's Memorial Day. Yeah, don't diet tomorrow. It's Memorial Day. I've been on the Atkins diet. No, don't. Hold on now. I know, I know. It's not the most healthy thing in the world, but I've lost a lot of weight. I've lost 25 pounds this year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But here's the problem. The fluctuator always happens. Because I know what's good for me. And I know what's not. Daniel, I'll go into your restaurant. And I know, no, it's not your fault. <laughs> I go into your restaurant and I think, okay, I know what I can have at Parcells that's good for me. I'm going to get a chef salad. Meat, cheese, lettuce, greens. You can have that. It's really good. But the problem is, right where you pay, they have these chocolate no-bake cookies. Very, very tricky one over there. You get a salad in your hand and you look down in this glass case. It's not plastic where you can't see through it. You have to be able to see through it. And I'll come with a couple, can't stop with one, two chocolate no-bake cookies. They're my favorite. Don't bake any for me, please, because I'm on a diet. And then I take my salad. After I eat my cookie, I save one for after, and I eat it down in the bakery. Where I'm surrounded by all sorts of pleasantries. Cupcakes, donuts. What's the problem? The problem is this. I know what I should be doing, but I always end up doing that that I don't want to do. Anybody else, that's your life story. Let's take this out of food now before we all start eating our arm here. I'm hungry too. I can also say that's how my life is. I know what I ought to be doing. But it seems like every time I start to get on track, I deal with this little problem called Richie's flesh. And I constantly find myself flat on my face, just like I'm the fluctuator in food, we also find ourselves fluctuating in life spiritually. We know what we should be doing, but we never seem to reach that bar that we've set. Anybody's life sound like that? It's just always an endless stream of falling short. I know what I want to do. I know it in my mind. I know it in my heart. I want to live for Jesus. I want to give my best. I want to be the best I can for Him. Sundays are usually a good day. That's why it's so important to go to church. Because I'm strong on Sundays. 
But there's always this thing coming every week called Monday morning. I know you can be on a spiritual high Sunday with your brothers and sisters and cry. Monday morning, you find yourself looking in the mirror. And you find yourself flat on your face. How do we break that cycle? How do we break the cycle of constantly falling short of what we know that we're supposed to be doing, but we never seem to get there? I got good news for you this morning. We've been singing about grace all day, and it's a great, great day for that. This morning, we're going to get set free from that cycle. Are you ready? Would you like to be set free from a cycle of constantly letting yourself and others down, believing that you can do it, but always find yourself failing? Would you like to be set free from that this morning? You're in the right place. Paul gave us the answer. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Romans chapter 7. See, because I believe there's people here this morning, you've bought terms like unworthy. You've bought terms like, I'm not like everybody else in this building. There's people in this building here this morning that feel like you don't fit in because nobody else is like you. Nobody else understands. All of everybody else around me is spiritual. They're Christians. They don't know what I've done. They don't know who I really am. I want to be that person, but I can't do it. You're in the right place today. Romans chapter 7. Let's start in verse 13. And we're going to read, then we're going to come back through this. Romans seven thirteen. Is everybody there? Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin. And through the commandment, we might become sinful beyond measure. How many people would say, that is you, I am sinful beyond measure. That's the state of humanity before Christ came. It's the state of humanity apart from Christ. We are sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, and I am of the flesh, sold under sin. And here's what I'm talking about. I joked about it being a diet. It really wasn't that much of a joke. But it's the truth in life. Listen to Apostle Paul, the one through whom we have most of the New Testament. The greatest apostle to ever walk the earth. The great missionary Paul. You're going to be in good company. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want. But I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it's good. So now it's no longer I who do it, but it's sin that dwells within me. For I know nothing good dwells in my flesh. For I don't have the desire, for I do have the desire to do what is right, but I don't have the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but it's the evil that I hate. That's what I keep doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but it's sin that dwells in me. Stop there for a moment. Paul had the same problem that you and I have. It's called the flesh. That's the cycle of humanity. Even if we have in our innermost being the desire to do what's right and to live for God and to do the best we can for Him, the cycle of humanity is you are not ever going to be good enough to reach that standard that the law set for you. You will never be able to do it. Matter of fact, you won't even be able to come close to it. But it doesn't keep us from trying. See, a lot of times in church, we feel like that now that I'm a Christian, I need to do the best I can, and you should do the best you can to live for the Lord. But you need to understand something. That is not what draws you closer to the Father. Jesus' blood 
is the only access point that you have to the Father. It's not you being the best person that you possibly can. And when you find yourself falling on your face, not reaching that standard, God's mad at you. And He wants nothing to do with you. He is only open to even taking mention of your name if you're doing the best you can. If you're reading three chapters a day, if you spent some time in prayer, if you didn't go out on the weekend but you stayed in, then God might listen to you. That's a bunch of hogwash. Let's continue. Paul has the same problem we do. So I find it to be a law that when I do right, evil lies close at hand. Boy, isn't that the truth? For I delight in the law of God in my innermost being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am. We talked about amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Paul hit it on the head. I am a wretch. As I was thinking about this sermon this week and studying this scripture, I was brought back to a time before I was married to my wife, and I've been very open about this in this church, when I was addicted to pornography. I mean addicted. It had me around the throat. And I was caught in this vicious cycle. I'm going to do good. I'm going to do good. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a, I don't want to do that. But I always found that evil was lying close at hand. And I always found myself not strong enough to overcome the enemy in my own strength. And I'd find myself lying flat on my face. And I'd feel about that small. And I'd start buying these thoughts of you're never going to cut it, Richie. You're not ever going to be good enough. You're not like anybody else. If everybody else in the church knew what you were doing, endless cycle happened over and over and over. And over again, I knew what I wanted to do, but it was the evil laying in hand that always had me by the throat. I can relate to that wretch. You remember the time in your life when Jesus found a wretch? You remember that in your life? Maybe you're there this morning. Like, Richie, you've just described my life. I am a wretch, I'm empty, I'm broken. I'm at my wit's end. I've got no strength left to do this. You're in the right place this morning. Paul says, who will deliver me from this body of death? There is no hope on the inside of me. Who will deliver me from this process that I'm in? It's a vicious, endless cycle. Time for some good news. We've delivered the problem this morning. It's time for the solution. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Man, aren't you thankful you've been delivered through Jesus Christ, our Lord? We've seen ourselves in the problem this morning. I see myself in this problem over and over and over. And if we could get to that standard, we wouldn't need Jesus. But let me tell you, He has come to deliver you. This morning, I've got three victories that Jesus has given us. Are you ready? Three victories that Jesus has given us to end that vicious cycle in your life. Number one, the rules have been changed. I want to say that again. The rules have been changed. What do you mean, Richie? We're talking about the law. Romans chapter 8, verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. You're not in that cycle anymore. 
Let me tell you something, church. You are not under the law. Jesus fulfilled the law and totally obliterated it. You are not under the law. But you know what we do in church life? We give our life to Christ and we feel like that that means now I put on the chains of legalism and the law. No, it was for freedom that he set you free. You are not in that cycle of trying to do the best you can to get your way to the Father. Jesus paved that way once and for all. The rules have been changed. Praise the name of the Lord. The rules have been changed. Who will deliver me from this body of death? What a wretch I am. Well, Jesus came and he said, we're going to have a rule change. I have a 10-year-old son. We play board games occasionally. As you well know, he has a lot of energy, so it doesn't last very long. Somewhere along the middle of a game, especially a game like Monopoly that takes a long time, he loses interest after about 10 minutes. You cannot play a game of Monopoly in 10 minutes. Matter of fact, you don't want to play a game of Monopoly with me, period. I'll mop the floor with you. I went to state and Monopoly. No, I'm kidding. How do you get through a game of Monopoly with your energetic son? We have to have a rule change. Start coming along. Instead of buying property, we're going to start dealing it out. Try to cut this as quick as we possibly can. He's losing interest. That's the same thing that Jesus did. There was a game of life, although it's not a game. Came along and it's going a certain way. And Jesus says, I'm going to change the rule so it's not like this anymore. You're not under that. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to say that. I am not under the law. Say this. Jesus fulfilled the law for me. Now live like you believe that. You don't have to say that, but I'm telling you. Live like you believe that. First victory is the rules were changed. Here's the second victory. And this is so good. The onus has been changed. The onus has been changed. What are you talking about, Richie? Why would you use a word like onus on a Sunday morning? Because the onus is no longer on you. The onus is on Jesus. There was a rule change. You're not under the law anymore. And the focus has been changed from what you do to what Jesus did. Oh, man. The focus itself is not even on you. It's on Jesus. Paul said in Galatians chapter 2. Let me pull this up. I could quote it, but I don't want to miss it up. Galatians chapter 2. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm. Aren't you thankful that it's not about what you do, but it's about what Jesus did? I can tell you this, if it's about what Richie does, I'm going to be in a heap of trouble. There's days that I do really good. And there's days I find myself on my face, just like Paul did. Never achieving that standard. The focus has been taken off of you. When you find yourself in Christ, the law of sin and death has been obliterated. And you're now living under the law of the spirit of life. And when God looks at you, you realize he doesn't see your sin when you're in Christ. He sees Jesus' blood. That has covered you and has cleansed you and has made you new. When Jesus came and died for you, that's all God sees when you are in Christ. God doesn't see a person that never can get there, that's just a little short. That's always failing him. When you get in Jesus and receive Christ, 
and his atoning work for you. That's what God sees. Man, thank you, Jesus, that when the father looks at Richie, he doesn't see the wretch of a man that I was or the wretch of a man that I am. He sees the pure, spotless blood of the Lamb of God that has cleansed me and made me white as snow, and he sees the same thing on you. The focus has been changed. The onus has been changed. The onus is now on Jesus. Here's the third victory. Everyone say the rules have been changed. Say the onus has been changed. This is my favorite. Mm. The condemnation has been eradicated. See, because that's part of that cycle. That is part of that cycle. Every time I failed... Every time I messed up, I bought the guilt, and there was the enemy telling me how worthless I was, and I had no place to go with it. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, There is now, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. He had a rule changed. He put the focus on Jesus and all the guilt and condemnation that you felt. Jesus says, no, no. Not anymore. Oh, man, I'm so thankful we don't have to carry the guilt of the sin that we've had in our lives. He removed the guilt of it. He removed the condemnation of it. He removed the guilt and condemnation of every time you fail. But we don't live like we believe that. We don't live like we believe that. I want to draw a distinction for you this morning. There's a difference in condemnation and conviction. When you find yourself in Christ, condemnation has nothing to do with you. You can tell the devil to take a hike with his condemnation. You know, Jesus said to agree with your adversary quickly. When the enemy comes at you, when you find yourself falling short of that standard and says, you're worthless, you're not going to make the cut, just say, you know what, you're right. But it ain't about me. It's about Jesus. And he did make that cut. I agree with you, Satan. I never agree with you, but I agree with you right now. You're exactly right. I'm unworthy. But let me tell you something now. Your condemnation can go somewhere else because it's not about me anymore. It's about the blood of Jesus. And it has made me worthy. That's condemnation. Now, it's been replaced by conviction when you find yourself in Christ. Does it mean that Richie doesn't mess up? Richie messes up a lot. I mean, Richie messes up daily. Just ask Jenny. She can tell you. No, no, not right now. She's going to be teaching a new cluster in August about all my shortcomings. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Kidding. What happens when conviction falls, though? When you realize that you've missed it? I feel that tug of the Holy Spirit. What that means is go back to the cross, Richie. Go back to forgiveness and repentance at the cross and say, Lord, I'm so sorry, I've missed it. And I'm thankful that it's not about me, it's about your blood. I'm going back to the cross, back to the cross, back to the cross. Condemnation leaves you hopeless because you are worthless. You can't cut it. But once you find yourself in Christ, it's just a constant reminder it's not about you. It's about the blood of Jesus, Dan. Praise the Lord. Man, aren't you thankful that Jesus has given us the victory to end this vicious cycle in our life of constantly seeing this that we never can achieve? I'm not good enough. Jesus came and gave us a rule change. He came and said, look at me. Don't look at them anymore. And he said, Satan, take a hike with your condemnation. That's not for my children anymore. Man, praise the name of the Lord, church. 
if we would live like we believe this, that this is truth, your Christian life would be forever changed. And I'll tell you what I believe the root of it is, why we don't live like we believe that. You hear words like, well, that's easy grace, brother. You don't understand the depth of the grace of God. There's a fear of, well, does that mean you get saved, go live however you want to? No, but that's what people are afraid of. No, the Bible says, it doesn't say go live how you want to. Paul said, does that mean that I should keep on sinning? He said, by no means. Grace can abound more if I do, by no means. We're supposed to be living sacrifices. But I'm telling you, and don't ever forget this, you are not under the law once you find yourself in Christ. It's not for you. He's fulfilled it for you. Stop trying to fulfill it yourself. Let Jesus live through you. And stop buying the condemnation of the enemy. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that there's been a rule change, Lord. We thank you that you came and said, look at me, don't look at them. And we're thankful, Lord, that we don't have to carry the sting of rejection and condemnation any longer. Lord, you've dealt with all three of those things. When Paul said, who shall deliver me from this body of death? You stood up and said, I will. I will and I have and I did. Lord, in this morning, we've sung about grace. And Lord, we can't have enough of it, Lord. <laughs> Give us more, Lord. Break the cycle, Jesus. Break the cycle. Lord, I know that there's those here today, Lord, that needed to hear this word. That's so fed up with their flesh and they feel like the place that Paul was in. I can't do it. I know what I want to do, but I can't. I'm a failure. I cannot do it. They're right. We can't. But you came and did do it, Lord. And Lord, we need you and your mercy to cover us today, Lord. Lord, I just throw myself on this altar this morning, Jesus, and offer myself to you. Lord, I'm thankful that when you look at me, you see the blood of Jesus that has covered me, Lord, and forgiven me and cleansed me. Lord, and I'm bold enough to believe that there's people in this building this morning that that cycle needs to end for. And you need to set free, Lord. Lord, I believe they're here today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask you this morning. I'm not going to embarrass you in any way, I promise. This is between God and you. But who would say, Richie, I'm caught in that cycle. I've been trying to do it myself. And every time I fail, I believe the lie that I'm not good enough. And it just keeps pushing me further away. And I need the grace of Jesus this morning. I see those. Just raise your hand right now. I, I know you're in this building. I see those. I see those. I see those. Church, let's just all pray this together before we go back into worship. Say, dear Jesus, cleanse me from the inside out. Deliver me from this body of death. I thank you. For the work that you did on the cross. And when you rose again. When I receive you. I am not under the law anymore. But I've been set free. To the law of the spirit of life. So this morning. I respond to your work. And I say fill my life. And deliver me. From this body of death, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand to our feet, church.